Where are we right now? So all of these animals here have medically significant venom. It's actually very, very toxic. These are creatures from the deep. If some of these were to get out, it could cause agricultural damage. One of the only deadly animals we keep. If I take the lid off, do you want to hold her? What's up guys, my name's George, and today we're at the largest invertebrate zoo in the United States. This 30,000 square foot facility behind us is the Butterfly Pavilion, located here in Westminster, Colorado. You guys are about to see some of the most crazy alien-like creatures in the world. We're getting a private tour from the director of animal collections, Sarah Stevens. We focus exclusively on invertebrates here, so those are animals without backbones, which make up about 97% of all species in the world. All right, let's go take a look inside. We're bright and early at 7 a.m. before Butterfly Pavilion is actually open. We're also here with our friends from Fritz Aquatics. Hello! So this is our terrestrial invertebrate exhibit here at Butterfly Pavilion. Oh, I don't know about this. Rosie is the famous tarantula here that is always available to hold. The Chilean Rosa tarantula. Oh man, what's the worst that could happen, right? It's an irrational fear. We have been open for 26 years. We have never had a guest be bitten by Rosie. So I'm not gonna be the first. Oh, Let's yeah. go. She really didn't like my energy. She went well, right back. Well, you have cold hands. Since she's from the desert, she prefers warmer hands. Let me heat my hands up for her. Warm now. She's hanging she's out. Staying. Look at that. Thanks so much. That yeah, was so cool. Don't forget your sticker. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, my sticker. Ready to head on to the back? We are. USDA inspected facility. So, yeah. If some of these were to get out, it could cause agricultural damage. This is our behind the scenes terrestrial invertebrate holdings. Inverts that kind of crawl, walk, fly, that aren't our butterflies. They all live here. How many different animals are in here? Up to thousands if you count like every single cockroach, every single ant. What are these guys doing over here? These are our zookeepers and interns. They are integral to helping us make sure animals are fed, cared for on a daily basis. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of spiders, Sarah. You got some whole rosy. These are definitely all of her friends. This is our Severe's shelf, so all of these animals here have medically significant venom. These guys are sapphire ornamentals, critically endangered, highly valued in the ornamental trade because they actually have like a blue coloration and gorgeous patterning to them. It's almost like a cobalt blue. These are ones that you don't touch. No, these are a no touchy. <laughs> They're an old world tarantula, so when you're looking at tarantulas, there's new world and old world. Old world is Africa, Asia. New world is the Americas. The Americas tarantulas tend to have urticating hairs. They have hairs on their abdomen, they can kick off when they're upset, not gonna kill you or anything like that. Old world tarantulas don't have those hairs. Their first line of defense is their bite. Their venom is usually more medically significant. I have seen people hold these tarantulas. I do not recommend. One of the only deadly animals we keep here are black widows, and that's because they're honestly super easygoing. They've done tons of research on black widows and their aggression levels, and they're not aggressive spiders at all. Laziest, highly venomous animal in the world. They're like little couch potatoes. Spiders are actually capable of deciding whether they want to use venom. If a black widow is being bothered, the first thing it'll do is run away. Second thing it'll do, if you really push it, dry bite. So it'll bite without venom. It just wants you to leave it alone. The only time researchers were really able to get it to bite with venom was if they made the spider think its life was in peril. So they had to squeeze the abdomen before that spider would bite with any venom whatsoever. Wow, they don't want to hurt us. These are McClay's stick insects. She was like really into wanting to be held by you. He's Whoa, dancing. He's, that is so cool. So these have little hooks on the end of their feet. Um, yeah. They're called tarsal claws. I can like really feel it yes. feeling me. They kind of almost feel like Velcro. Okay. It's because they're big climbers. See, it's kind of like bobbing back and forth. It's swaying. Yeah, these are a mimic for dead leaves in the wild. Think about a dead leaf on a tree. The wind really easily grabs it and is able to get it to move. I'll meet you halfway. So these are babies, they're wicked fast. Yeah. So they kind of look like a little ant versus the adults. A little baby. That's our baby. Wow, giant African millipede? This is actually a pretty young one. They can get up to 15 inches in length and they'll be about the thickness of your thumb. So this guy's actually pretty small. There he goes. They can secrete toxins. Some of them can even secrete cyanide. So don't lick a millipede, but it can stain your hands a little bit yellow. Usually after we work with a millipede, we'll just wash your hands off. No, I can do that, Georgie boy. Why? It's it's just... I could do a spider, but that has a lot of legs. After the tarantula, this <laughs> no. is nothing. They're so cute. <laughs> 
This is a female Mexican fire leg. It's really cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. Whoa. Jeez. Is that one you hold or not hold? This is a not hold. They are a new world tarantula, so they do have those urticating hairs on the abdomen. Is um, also a not jump spider? The tarantulas don't jump. Their limbs are actually like a hydraulic system, so all of their joints are actually really soft and flexible, and they pump fluid into those legs to be able to move. That's why when you see a dead spider, it's all curled up. It's no longer able to push fluid into those legs. They're really pretty. This is a Brazilian white knee, because of those really nice white knees. She's got a cockroach hanging out of her mouth, so that's why she's kind of perked. Tarantulas will sometimes do a little happy dance when they eat. Uh, an orchid there on the shelf. <gasps> Ooh, oh, right after. that's amazing. It does look like an orchid. So it's a way for them to camouflage to hide from their prey more than a camouflage to hide from predators. So but they're, they're stealthy. Yeah, and they've got incredible eyesight. This is a dead leaf mantis. Think you could feed one for me, Melanie? Are you ready? We're ready. <laughs> Oh my Whoa. god! And then just straight to town on it. They're taking its leg off. Voracious. <laughs> this is a Madagascar hissing cockroach. This is a male, you can tell because of these big nice horns. The males have those, the females do not. These guys are called hissing cockroaches because they can produce a hissing sound by forcing air across the spherical. Oh god, you're gonna do it? What's oh, wrong god. with it? I'm always okay until Sean goes, oh, you're gonna hold it? And then it? I'm like... No, 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 what if it just ran into your mouth? What would you do? If we didn't have cockroaches, we'd be up to our ears and waste some really important recyclers. You don't have scorpions, do you? We have scorpions. Yeah. Desert hairy scorpion. Oh. Super easy guy. So scorpions fluoresce under black light. Sorry, are you guys ready? I heard a scream. I didn't know that was coming. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, so why do they do that? It's just their chitin it biofluoresces. Their exoskeleton, the material it's made out of, is capable of biofluorescence. All scorpion species do this. The stinger is on the tip of the tail. That's where they're able to inject venom. You can really see its claws now. Usually the size of their claws is a good indicator of how venomous they are. So if they've got really big claws, they probably aren't that venomous. They've got itty bitty little claws. That's when you want to worry a little more. Whoa. <laughs> Kayla's whip scorpion. That's a scorpion? It's not a scorpion, but it is an arachnid. Why does it have such long, those are so long. It doesn't ask you why you have long. That's uh, true, it's a good point. Kind of how they sense the world. Kind of like catfish whiskers. This whole section is the part that I'm more familiar with, the aquarium. This is our aquatic invertebrate exhibit. We have pretty much exclusively marine inverts in here. This is a giant isopod. These are found in like the super deep dark waters of the ocean. So Sarah just went behind the scenes now and she's actually holding it up. That's unreal. Woo, really, usually I can keep my hands in that tank for about 30 seconds before it starts getting real painful. <laughs> it's like a giant roly poly almost. Yeah, it's the same group of animals. They're all crustaceans. Full grown, they can get up to like 35 inches. These guys, when they were shipped to us, they were wrapped in frozen burlap. They get an air bubble and they're out of water. And so I had to burp it. That kind of a burp, like a baby burp? Kind of like a baby burp. You had to get it to like let go of that air bubble it had trapped. We usually have a red light on this system that allows our guests to see them, but red light is the first light you lose in the ocean, so usually deep sea animals can't see red light. That's why a lot of deep sea animals are actually red. It's almost like an invisibility cloak. There's Doug. Doug? Oh! Doug is a California two-spot octopus. Oh. Did you just eat a crab? <laughs> Currently eating. What's that blue ring on it? So that's called an ocelli, so it has one on each side. That's why it's called the California two-spot. They are blue, but it's not related necessarily to like a blue ring. So the venom on these guys is actually very mild. Oh, really? Every single species of octopus has venom. They utilize that venom to help detach meat from the exoskeleton of their prey items. Oh, so he just changed colors. Did you see that? They can change colors for a lot of different reasons. Wow. Wow, Doug showing off right now. Doug came to us fairly young in size. Octopuses have a pretty short lifespan, but Doug is a cooler watered octopus and usually their lifespans are a little bit longer because their metabolism is slower. I've heard stories of octopuses in aquarium facilities where they'll escape their tanks and the funny antics. Do you have any stories like that? Doug is, <sighs> Doug is a monster. Doug has <laughs> flooded the back twice, would just spray water at people walking by. My little pain in the butt. You got me up two in the morning, two nights in a row, because you kept flooding stuff. Horseshoe crabs are actually more closely related to spiders than they are to crabs. They're a type of arachnid. Whoa. There's only four species of horseshoe crab in the world and only one found in North America. So this is found off the Atlantic coast. This is Limulus polyphemus. You can also see it looks like there's blue. Um, these guys actually have blue blood and their blood is really important for pharmaceuticals. Their blood has a chemical compound that allows us to know medicine has been contaminated with bacteria. It'll coagulate. Pretty much if you've had any medication, had a vaccine, anything like that, 
these guys are responsible for making sure it was safe. Very cool. Yeah, so this is our peacock mantis shrimp. You have one. We do. They're absolutely one of my favorite animals. They're so cool for so many different reasons. They can hit with just excessive force. They're called thumb splitters. The bones in your hands are small enough that they could probably break a bone in your hand, and they're very smart. Mantis shrimp can actually remember an individual up to a month later. In the reefs, they actually do a ton of fighting, and you gotta remember who you won against. Am I gonna lose? or did I win last time? Visually very incredible eyesight. They have up to 16 cones for color, whereas humans have three. This tank here has a yellow pistol shrimp, gorgeous shrimp goby pair. This is a super cool tank it's dedicated just towards those pairings. They work together in a pretty cool way. The shrimp is building these very elaborate burrows out underneath sand and substrate, and the goby's responsible for protecting the shrimp. You can kind of see on this tunnel right here, that thing goes all the way down and yeah. who knows where it goes. A lot of times in aquariums when you have the pistol shrimp, you can hear it basically firing off its appendages. I also love the supernatural look. Biggest differences you'll see a lot of times in zoos versus home aquarists is home aquarists are oftentimes creating this gorgeous, idealized landscape. It's an art piece. Our goal is to showcase what would a chunk of this look like out in the ocean. Two very different approaches and neither is good or bad. We have an upside down jellyfish right here. Just hang out upside down. Or upside down because they have photosynthetic algae in the tentacles basically, so they farm sunlight, so mm -hmm. they're kind of close closer to a coral than the other jellies are. What's in here? We have a tulip snail in here, which is actually out, which is kind of cool. These guys are a carnivorous species. Most people think of snails as herbivores, but there's actually a wide variety of them that are carnivorous. Most of the larger ones are carnivorous. They usually will overcome their prey. All of the facilities that we're visiting this week are part of an initiative called the Florida Reef Track. Butterfly Pavilion is a part of the efforts. Can you talk a little bit about how you guys are involved? So basically, this disease crops up in 2014 and is unbelievably deadly, incredibly contagious. 60% chance of transferring from one coral to another, and once a coral gets it, it has almost a 100% mortality rate. The Florida Wildlife Conservation Commission were basically out on boats to get coral out of the ocean ahead of this disease. I think there's 2,000 total coral across different facilities. Our part of this project is to hold coral here as a gene bank. The coral here and the coral kept at all of these institutions across the United States are imperative for the survival of these species. So this is our Wings of the Tropics Rainforest Conservatory. Thousands of butterflies flying all over this place. Probably easily going to see 20 to 40 species in here. You'll see lots of butterflies getting breakfast this morning as they're just waking up. So it's got its proboscis out, kind of a straw like mouth part. Yeah. These are actually clown noses. We have to get kind of creative. You can't really go to the store and get butterfly feeders or things. Those butterflies or are those moths? So those are actually butterflies. Those are called owl butterflies because they kind of look like an owl face. You can literally see a face. A butterfly, they emerge out of chrysalis. Moths are going to be emerging out of a pupa or a cocoon. They're all part of the same big group, which is Lepidoptera. Sean, did you see there's a snail over here? How come you don't call it the snail place? There's obviously snails here too. Uh, I think we would get too many people. Probably be packed. So when people come in here, I assume that the butterflies kind of tend to land on people a lot. If a butterfly lands on you, totally okay. When you touch a butterfly, that can actually have really negative impacts on their health because their wings have scales on them that can be rubbed off really easily by human hands. The best tip for getting a butterfly to land on you is to just stand real still in a sunny spot. No takers. When it opens its wing, it's like a totally different color. That's a blue morpho. You'll see a lot of blues in butterflies, but a lot like aquatic animals, it's not actually a true blue pigment. It's a refraction of light, so like a hippo tang. You see that a lot in the animal kingdom. It's very rare to find blue as a pigment. This butterfly has been hanging out on our cameras for the entire time that we've been in here. He's a content butterfly. Sub for sub. Invertebrates, sometimes out of place, out of mind to people, but there's so many different things that they're doing, right? Whether it's for medicinal purposes or being the foundation of ecosystems, things that I certainly never put as much thought into. They've been doing conservation and education for over 25 years now. And the way that they fund a lot of these projects is through admission. So coming to visit is probably one of the biggest ways people can make an impact. So many different, cool, and amazing creatures we saw today. Your passion for the inverts is, is there. They need as many champions as they can get. So if you enjoy, and you want to thank Sarah, leave a comment down below. Make sure you give the video a like. You know the signature outro. Remember to keep your nitrates low. George. And Sarah out.